Alright, love, are you good? I'm good. I don't know how good I am. <laughs> like, I don't mean like good, like, wow, Jeff's good. I mean like mentally <laughs> how good I am with this because we just tried to record something and I'm just not sure how it's going to go. We're so just, We're just trying a new app and we're, yeah. just, we're learning and we don't have the internet here so we're using our... Yeah, I think part of the part of the biggest problem is is yes, we do not. There's really no, except for like going with like HughesNet or something. There is no. There's no cable. There's no hard wired internet because currently we're in the boondocks. It's about to change because Talky Fiber has run all the lines, and we're going to have optic, optic what? Fiber optic. Fiber That's optic. Fiber yeah. optic internet that they tell me is going to be like. You know, I know everybody says all oh, lightning fast, lightning fast, but. It's gonna be fast. The, the free, I'm gonna load this. I go up to the park where Talky Fiber has free internet and it's faster than the Ocean Pines Pintail Drive oh, Mediacom yeah, mm -hmm. that we pay for. So please bear with us. If this is a sucky episode, <laughs> we're, I don't think we're allowed one, but just, just give us, just give us a little bit of consideration. Consideration, is that what I wanna use? Yeah. Yeah, some kindness, some consideration, um, because if it if it does suck, I'm gonna work very very hard at making it better. So mm -hmm. this is the Pitboss Podcast, brought to you by our good friends up at Molly's Place, mymollys dot com, m y m o l l y s dot com. Molly's is easily found on Route Two Thirteen in Kennedyville, Maryland, on Maryland's famed Upper Eastern Shore. Next up is Steve Hoover, Duckwater Boats, New Philadelphia, Ohio. Duckwaterboats.com. Steve is the maker of Love. World's largest duck boat. The world's largest duck boat. Next up will be our good friends at Duck Blind Bistro, which I just happen to have. It's empty. It's empty, but there we go. Do have to have it right here in hand. Duck Blind Bistro. John, Paul, and Jay. Duck Blind Bistro. B I S T R O dot com. Dirty Duck coffee buck and jay at dirty duck coffee love we're like like it's just a little bit we're this close yep. just a little bit further along we, we're gonna have, have a, a pretty cool announcement i think crabs to go are very good friends mark john dan crabs to go is easily found on maryland but u.s route 50 as well as maryland route 589 in berlin maryland um if you know us you know crabs to go if you don't know us and you don't know what crabs to go is, you got to get on that. Lastly, but not least, is Whaleyville Wagon Tails Love. Yep, well, Whaleyville Wagon Tails is... Not, uh, not Wallyville, Whaleyville. No, Whaleyville Wagon Tails. Yep, so we're just doing a little bit of you know, dog boarding, dog sitting here. Have your pet be treated like one of our own, and they have it pretty good, let me tell you. They, they do. They, we treat them, there's one... There's two, and she was just getting attacked by a horsefly. That's why I was distracted. Two of five mm -hmm. at my feet. Our feet are not ours, so uh, it's all good. <sighs> all good. I don't know. Please, again, if this is a bad episode, you know, let we get, we're not golfers. You're not, well. You are a golfer now, right? <laughs> no, we'll definitely say, not a golfer. Say this that. is our mulligan. How about that? There you go. Is that what does that mean? I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. a give me. <laughs> A mulligan? Yes, actually, Jake did tell me about that. Okay, yes. so this is our mulligan. Yes. Yeah, how do I, you know more about golf I than I realize? Anything about golf and love, well, we except I like John Daly, and in this podcast, I talk about Paulie McKinnon at Maggie's Pub. If Paulie wouldn't have taken that drink, I would have. I could call that seven fifty my own. Check that off the bucket list. And I could I could put myself in the John Daly class. Yeah, and then on the Except list I don't for smoke. a liver I don't transplant. Smoke I don't smoke it. <laughs> you want me to smoke, but I don't no. smoke. No. Pot? I, I don't smoke. That's all I'm going to say. I don't smoke. I've, never, no, I've smoked a cigar twice in my life. That's all I've ever smoked. Yeah, and that was horrible. But Well, the first time you weren't with me. Oh, okay. I said twice. All right. All right. <laughs> Possibly embarrassed. Now on to this version of... The Pit Boss Podcast, brought to you by our good friends at Molly's Place Sporting Goods. Love. Enjoy. I can sneak it in on you. Oh, no, no. I saw the countdown. That was <laughs> Could you see the countdown, Karen? Yes. Oh, 
I thought I was going to sneak in. I thought we were going to get some good behind the scenes. What'd you, what words you just say, Jeff, before I hit the button? Grandma. <laughs> oh, I thought you were going to tell me you can't hear me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I thought you were, that's what you are going to tell me, I thought. No? No. Oh, so speaking of drama, what's going on by the bay? Or by the river or by the bay? By the bay? Um, the I rest honestly, of the I don't know. I haven't heard the board. But... What did you send me? What? What did you What did you send me? You text me. The police. A barricade situation. Oh, oh, yeah. That's, no, no, that's not by the bay. That's in Hunter River. Remember when uh, there was a video of you had rye on your shoulder? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Right, right behind is right the goose the pond. pond. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Mm. All right, well, salute so, yeah, to you. I don't know. God, I'm sorry. Cut you off. No, that's all right. That's, that's old school. Not exactly. That's old oh, yeah, school. Man, I, I got a collection. <laughs> I'll sell that thing as, as a uh, antique here in another 20 years. <laughs> we should make some more. We should. We should make some license plates, too. Stop. Uh, what did Karen just say? I said no. no. Why? Why, love? We we. we yeah, you're breaking up now. Yeah. It was really good. Now it's yeah. not good. I can't hear you. I'll let the, I'll just... Does she know sign language, maybe? <laughs> I'll give her some sign language. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, love. You want you want to try to come around and see? This is a, for everybody that is attempting to watch this pit pause podcast brought to you by our good friends at molly's place sporting goods easily found on route 213 in kennedyville maryland on maryland's famed upper eastern shore my mollys.com m-y-m-o-l-l-y-s.com if you're trying to watch us listen to us we're having some technical issues right karen <laughs> <laughs> that's your sign language Oh my goodness! How did my life get like? How did my life get like this? What? Sign language. My percentage says a hundred, but it does change. Ninety-seven now. What are you guys looking at? Down at the bottom. I don't know. This is this. I love technology, but I don't know nothing about this technology. Obviously. Oh, I do see. Oh, that's the upload. That's the upload speed, right? Oh, uh, okay. Man, we need we need our talky fiber optical, fiber optics, excuse me, the internet. Are you hanging up? Why don't you just come sit by me? Run, love, run. All right, so we're experiencing a little technical difficulty. It is a new system. I don't know. Partly is... Um, Maybe because we don't, we still don't have good internet here. We have zero internet. Forget about good internet. We have zero internet here. We are out in the boondocks, as Gam likes to say. And although the fiber optic lines are in the ground, we do not have our service yet. But I can tell you this, Jeff. If the service is anything like the free service up at the park where I'm going to upload this podcast this evening, um, it's crazy. Like, we pay for the internet at uh, Mediacom at, at pintail and last week well two hours and 25 gigs up on youtube it would have taken me a good 45 minutes and pintail up at the park for free it was eight eight minutes it was fast lightning fast yeah that's crazy yeah, it is i don't know where karen went um i really want her to be part of this conversation i might have yeah. edited all this out make a maybe a, make a quick she's like she got all kinds of equipment. I can see her in a distance. She says, we can just start again. Fine with me. The show must go on. Come on, love. We didn't want to start without you. Oh, that's why you should just start again. No. No, it's a better story this way. Yeah. Well, my sign language is in there, so. <laughs> Your sign language? Jeff, did you say anything vulgar or rude? No, no. I could sense something, though. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I'll, uh, I'll nuzzle in. Here. You want to nuzzle in? Yeah. It's hot now, isn't it? Yeah. Jeff, the new uh, air conditioner mini split in the shop. It's crazy. I, it was, I was cold yesterday. Nice. I had to put a hooded sweatshirt on. 
All right, so this is the Pit Boss Podcast, brought to you by our good friends at My Always Play Sporting Goods. But since nobody else, this is the whole thing about how I communicate horribly. Jeff Wood, all the way from just outside Charlottetown, PEI, Canada, Prince Edward Island, Canada. Because even when I say PEI, I just assume everybody knows what I'm talking about. And they should. They should. That's why I just they say PEI. Don't you need to look it up. PEI, Prince Edward Island, Canada. Can I do this and turn the, turn the sound off? Sure. Karen's going to attempt to do, we're, we're again, we're, just, we're new at this technology. Maybe this is really old technology and we just suck. You, can, you need to volume. I just mute you. How about that? Yeah. Oh, you are muted. Okay, very good. All right, love you're back with us. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Jeffrey. Oh, I, I can still hear myself over yours. <laughs> Jeff, could you hear? Do you have good audio now? Yeah, it seems good. All right. No echoes. So once, so once again, Jeff Wood, we affectionately call you G-Off, all the way up on PEI Canada. We think it's all the way up because we're all the way down. But Prince Edward Island, Canada, I still like to say it is the furthest you can drive in drive to the east in Canada, but I think I've kind of come to the conclusion that actually Cape Britain is probably further east. Cape Breton and mainland Britain. Nova Scotia, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But where did Terry Fox start running? Terry Fox. Oh man, did I stump? Wait a minute, did I stump you? <laughs> <laughs> Terry Fox? You don't know Terry Fox? Did? Terry said that's almost sacrilegious for a Canadian not to know that. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Who is it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> he got he got leg cancer. He was going to run across Canada. Okay. He played. He was a soccer player, right? Played soccer. Had a pain in the back of his knee. They cut his lower leg off. And didn't he yeah. start? He started on PEI running west, right? No, I don't think so. You think he started in Cape Breton? No, I think he started in BC heading east. Nope, you're wrong. Okay. I'll admit when I'm wrong. Oh, here's my phone. I have to. He has to Google. I'm going to have to Google this. Talk amongst yourselves, yeah. please. But I'm telling you, Reach man, up. come on. You're going to make me look bad. Yeah, you know, I don't want to make you look bad, but I'm like in shock. I've never heard of him. Oh my goodness, you you two live sheltered lives. Look right there. Look. I can't see it. You can't see it. Doesn't have a leg. I know who he is. <laughs> I'm not that bad. <laughs> um, he was from British Columbia. Yeah. Uh, he was from British, British Columbia, but uh, he started his run. Oh, uh, what year was this? Uh, 1980. He's uh, da, da, da. You know, I think I did see a movie or some. At 22 years old, he became a national hero. Hmm. He, uh, he got to Thunder Bay, Ontario, 3,000 miles, and he collapsed. Yeah, I think he had all kinds of, like, with his... Um... So he started on the East Coast. Yes, from PEI. <laughs> <laughs> that, and if you don't know, that means Prince I'm, Edward Island. I'm so what? I said, if you didn't know what PEI means, that's Prince Edward Island. You want yes. me to backhand him? Karen wants to know if you want to backhand me. Where did Please. Terry Fox start his run? <sighs> How could he do that? What? It says he started his run in St. John's, Newfoundland. Exactly. So it must be what he came across PEI. And he took a, he evidently. Auntie. He caught the ferry. And evidently he took a boat. But he was running in uh, one spot the whole time. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's just one lap around the ferry. Oh, my goodness. All right. <laughs> Jeff, what are we going to try to do this year? Because Karen has a name for it, um, but in your words, because Karen and I have talked about it quite a bit. She's calling it the, the G&J. We're going to host four hunters um, for three days. Accommodations at Shaw's, all meals included. Uh, basically, you just have to get here. If you want to come in early, stay late, that's on you. Um, hunt geese, possibly some black ducks, mallards. Uh, 
hang out with Shaws, do some cooking, do some drinking, hanging out, and just have a good time. A good Basically, time we'll every year. Hundred percent, hundred percent. We went through it the other day, and you might know this. But, well, first off, you know the dollar better than we do. I think we're it's a dollar twenty five right now. I think. Yeah, That's, roughly. It's been hanging around there for a while. Yeah. Okay, so the U.S. dollar they're gonna they're gonna get a little bit bigger bigger bang for their buck, right? Yeah, for sure. All right, but the but the hunt is in U.S. dollars. It is. It is, but everything else. Uh, like, for instance, I said it's $25. You might not do this, but it's a $25 fee to get your gun into Canada. And with the exchange rate, that's like 19 something. Yeah, everything's almost like at a 25, 20, yeah, roughly 25% discount. Yeah, there we go. All right. Um, we, uh, we said uh, uh, water, soda, food, alcohol is on them, but there's plenty of places to get alcohol, right? Yeah, there's a new location just less than 10 minutes from Shaw's. I didn't tell. Oh, did you know yes, that? Yes, yeah, we oh. were doing the texting. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's yep, right. That's I get cool. confused. I get confused to who I was texting. I don't want to say anything, but I, this, it's kind of like calmed itself down. Okay. Yeah. I think it's running smoothly. Nice. Hopefully, we'll see. Touch wood. No. Uh, yeah. There. Oh. <laughs> no, I, I did it over here to post, love. Um, yeah, man, like the island itself is just i keep saying i mean you're from there so you maybe you don't say it or don't think it but i mean it's just beautiful i told uh we told everybody that we've that we run into that like i don't think we've met anybody that's been halfway across to us no just, no just the sobeys checkout lady but. yeah the sobeys checkout lady oh <laughs> and what's your she favorite was, story? Hey. what was that she was probably from away from away there you go what's your favorite store there Can, uh, karen I still wanted to say American Tire, but Canadian, Canadian Tire. Tire. That's our favorite store. <laughs> it is a good store. I have to give you credit. And if they need the hunting licenses, Canadian Tire is where they can purchase their hunting license. Yeah, or it can be all purchased online as well. Make things easy. Uh, but generally, typically, the way we like it to work is they're going to come in on Wednesday. I did not look up the. No, I do know uh, July of uh, July, uh, October twenty fifth. Hunt 26, 27, and 28. So come in on a Wednesday, on Thursday morning, Friday morning, Saturday morning. And um, if they wanted to stay, yeah, again, if they want to arrive early, uh, what, uh, chalet is like 125 ish, something like that? Yeah, I'd say roughly that. Yeah, something like that. And or stay a day late. Um, we have two of the spots are full, so we, we have two openings. Yes, exactly. And you are a registered guide. I am. Yeah, I've got a guide's license in PEI, and I can accommodate up to four hunters. There you go. So I will be a, I will be along, but I will not be hunting. Check You're the cameraman. Yeah, that's what I want to hear. Videographer. Unless we see, unless I see a collared goose. <laughs> yes. You went to Maggie's pub last night. What video was playing? The collared goose one. I think it just it loops. I think it just constantly loops at night. <laughs> and then every once in a while, there's something else gets thrown in, but it pretty much loops. Uh, an Eagles video. Music video. Eagle, yeah, or maybe Def Leppard. Or, but probably the five to one Eagle, so. Whose place is um, Maggie's Pub, just so everyone knows? Maggie's Pub. It belongs to Polly McKenna. How do we know Polly? How do we know Polly? Uh, <laughs> well, through hunting, I guess you know mostly. But he he joins just joins us annually on your trip up north. Yeah. Well, I met him way back in the day. I'm sorry, what? I say I've known him for years, but I know him best through hunting. Maybe it was through um, tap dancing or jig school, like when you go jigging. <laughs> It's called clogging, love. Clogging. <laughs> jigging. Jigging is fishing. Clogging. No, but isn't some jig like some... Well, you like could some... dance a jig, but that uh, video of Paulie when he was like 10 years old... Yeah, maybe, maybe he, that's what you meant. You were like, you know... He's getting yellow it. Yellow cloggers. He is getting it. Oh, yeah. I don't know if he's seen that video. I think it should be oh, shared. Oh, I've sent it to him. <laughs> okay, yes, I guess you did tell me that, yeah. <laughs> I'm probably going to ruin it, but... Fred West truly believes that's him as a child. <laughs> I do too. 
<laughs> well, I thought, I know, I was going to say one of you two, I was sure, and thought it was. And I was like, no, oh, that's crazy. I'm sorry, Fred West. He's, he's going to hear this, and then he, he's going to be disappointed because he thought he thought Paulie was talented. I did, too. I thought it was really him. <laughs> it would have been black and white. Yeah. <laughs> Paulie is that. Well, I truly believe, well, not truly believe, I know it. I met Paulie through Avery, out, Avery Outdoors way back in the day on the, when he was doing what he was doing for Avery and when I was doing what I was doing for Avery. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. And actually, the first time I met him was in Tunica, Mississippi, believe it or not. Oh, okay, yeah. Is that when he was wearing that? At a convention, right? right? <laughs> well, I'm going to have to edit this now. <laughs> what did she say? <laughs> I'm going to have to. She was referencing his. Okay. All right, so we're going to move on from that one. Thanks for making a little bit more extra work for me there, Karen. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> well, it's hot down there, right? <laughs> Down where, love? <laughs> oh, in Mississippi. Yeah, it's hot. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Hey, Will you stop saying that? <laughs> stop saying that. I'm going to have to edit that out now. <laughs> this may never go live. Like, this may never be streamed. We, this, is eight, eight, this is 18 minutes of nothingness. I didn't really spill it. <laughs> yeah, she didn't spill it. She just, she did a Fred West with Pappy. Since there smells it smells pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's try to I'm gonna to try to recover from all this sure. and, and, and get this going on a, a on a good direction again. Someday I might have to tell him the story though. Would he be offended? I don't think you could offend Paul. Okay, all right. Well then at Maggie's publisher I may tell him the story. Paulie, I know you're listening, so I will tell you this, the re what Karen keeps referencing. Maybe at the end of your 750. At the, yes, last night I talked about that. Paulie, <clears throat> Mike, well, I'm not going to go any further on that. Anyway, we talked about, uh, if you recall, the one afternoon that Karen drove home for me, but we sat there at Maggie's, and if he wouldn't have taken a drink out of the 750, I could have been recall. I could have been John Daly. Could have, could have, should have, would have. I'm not driving him next time. You can I'm, drive him. Well, I'll get a... I'm going with Judy. I'll get a PEI Uber then. I'm going to drive. <laughs> Paul says I can stay in. He's got a bed there now, right? Yeah, I think he bought a couple of cots. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I know he's got a nice shower. Of course, oh, he's yeah, got. He's got here's, well, I'm I'm not going to. I'm, I'm I was going to reference something about his bathroom, but I'm not going to say anything about it at all. And it's nothing wrong with your bathroom, Paul. It's what Chris Wilhelm talks to us and told us about about doors and whatnot. Oh yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get back to something sincere and serious. PEI, Prince Edward Island. We hunted Jeff in uh, New Brunswick the February idea season, maybe, what, in uh, February 2009, I think. Nine or ten? Uh, yeah, I don't, I can't remember. I thought it was, a, yeah, it could be. Maybe it was ten. Yeah. Because in December of 11, that was my first time up to PEI. And then we, Karen, we've been there since four times or more. We had five, five times that we, we could have got in because, you know, COVID didn't mess it up. Yeah, that got in the way. It 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 did get in the way. Uh, side note to all this, Whalerville Wagon Tails is it's busy here today, so we got mm -hmm. we got some confusion going on. But and I'm not some talking camp about campers. Yep, but I'm not talking about any any technical technical uh, technical problems. All right, uh, you've been banning geese, and I, I've seen uh, Wildfowl Magazine has been posted out of right. Yeah. Yeah, I was in touch with, um, oh my God, now I'm going to forget his name. I was in touch with Wildfowl. Skip. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. I was in touch with Skip. Uh, Skip Knowles. Emailing, then texting, and he said, I mentioned that it was going to be banned in some geese, and he says, hey, can you take some pictures? I throw them up on the uh, on the Instagram page. I cleared it with the Canadian Wildlife Service, because sometimes, you know, government, they... They may or may not want things posted, and they just said, yeah, fill your boots. I think they handled 958, roughly. Um, but I say handled, and that's because, you know, there's there's recaptures. You get birds that were banded previous years, so they don't get a new band, obviously, but they do get recorded. Yeah, it was it was a little bit slower, I think, than some years, but still good. Uh, avian influenza tests also? Yeah, swab and some geese. Um, 
and then others they were taking blood samples <clears throat> and apparently the blood sample would show if they had had it and recovered good information it is um side note to all that yesterday morning early uh we heard our first flock of geese go over the house oh right on uh, yeah i haven't yes. seen any flying here lately yeah i mean there's plenty sit sitting, plenty sitting everywhere but that was the first ones that i've that I, I've, I've heard here for sure um yeah, probably taking young over test plates there you go one of uh, PEI's claim to fame that I always tell everybody about is it is the only place, I'm saying it's the only, I say that it's the only place on the East Coast that you can consistently shoot a Barrow's Golden Eye. Yeah, that's my understanding. I know there's uh, Riley McHugh, you know, Riley, you've, you've uh, hung up with Riley. He's been up a couple of times taking pictures of them, and I know last year he stopped somewhere in New Brunswick and got some pictures. Yeah, well. um, and then a decent number of them there, too, apparently, so. But here, yeah, if if you know if the person came at the right time of the year, it, it's not a hard thing to shoot. So if somebody wants to check off the Barrows Golden Eye and specifically off their list and specifically an East Coast Barrows Golden Eye, you can you can help make that happen. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, especially late late season, right? Yeah, anyone that I, that contacts me, I tell them never to come really before the the last couple of days, November and into December. And I don't get a lot of people come up, but I'm just, you know, if I get two two groups of two or three people a year, that's about all I need. Do you feel confident that we will not see any when we're up on our trip? No, no I was thinking about that today, actually. Um, we could definitely give it a try. I'd, I'd be up for it, for sure. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be a good time. I, if Karen's wants yeah. to take a trip, I would, I would think it would be, I'd like, to, I'd like her to see, even if she just sees Goldeneye. Yeah. You know, doesn't have to well, be a bear. Karen, have you have you been up west yet? I can't remember. No, and that that's why I would like to go just to see yeah. a different area. There's a guy up there. You've heard me speak of Red Dirt Road and Moth Lane Brewery. Um, he owns a couple of cottages right by the brewery, so I may reach out to him and say, you know, find out how late he's going to keep the cottages open. Um, if he's going to be open. I don't. I, I forget the dates that Fred's here. Like, is he leaving on a Saturday? Do you remember or Sunday? Um, here I'm going to look at. There's two things I'm going to look for. Well, I'll look at the calendar first, and see. I would say. I would say like he's. Saturday. Yeah, I would think. I would think like the fourth, like that Saturday. I would think. I have it on that calendar. Okay. Well, on there. Okay. Well, I will touch. Let me see. Uh, in PEI. Nope, fourth is fourth is uh, the part. Yep, so the f fourth is when they leave. Okay, sorry, I, I missed some of that. You're you're breaking up pretty bad. Uh oh, oh Jeff I froze. I can't hear anything right now. Okay, so what were we talking about? For a good ten seconds, I couldn't hear what you said at all. Hmm. I probably was cussing. I'm thinking. <laughs> We're talking about Barrows, were we? Yeah, we're talking about Barrows, Golden Eye. And going up there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so, no, 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 no. We're talking about Fred West. So you said up west. Fred West leaves on the 4th. Saturday the 4th. Okay, yeah. So, heads so if he left on the 4th, we could go up in the 5th. I'll get a hold of, of um, Eric and see. And not that it all hinges on that, but if. If Eric has his cottages open, we could go up on the 5th, which is a Sunday, yeah. do a little bit of a scout for them, be prepared to hunt them on Monday, and then we could have supper at the uh, at the brewery, stay at the cottage, and take it from there. Oh, that sounds like fun. And do a little a little tour, too, as well, you know, on Sunday of Up West. Yeah, Karen's on board with that. I'm, I'm trying to find somebody that uh, I think... I said, did I send you a picture the other day that it was a, he's a lobster fisherman? No? No, I don't remember that one. Valley Boys Beards. Yeah, no, I don't remember that one. Well, he's up west somewhere. Oh, no, you did send, you did send something about somebody up west, yeah. Yeah, I can't really see oh, that. Backwards. Um, the problem being, it, it's that time of year, there's a lot of people who suck down their, their cottages, you know, with renting because it's... It's the end of the tour season, or at, like after the end of the tour season. But, well, that's what happened to us last year. Yeah, exactly. That's why we didn't get there. But I'll reach out to Eric and see what he has to say. But yeah, it's definitely, you know, you come the right time of the year. You saw it first year you were up, 2011. I mean, we had plenty of barrows 
in the decoys. Oh, 100%. And quite a few other, you know, rec- common golden eye, bears golden eye. I always like to tell people, too, everybody laughed when I was up there, like, you're here to shoot a golden eye? Like, you know, can- Canada geese and the black duck is the king there. Well, especially you get up west, those guys don't even bother. Like, they don't even, they don't want to shoot golden eyes at all, you know. I know a buddy of mine, Ben, who you met, well, you've met a few times, um, but you met on your initial trip, and he was with us hunting there up near Mill uh, no River. He took some guys, he worked as a fisheries officer up that way, and he took some guys out one time, and they they had some golden eyes decoy right in, and they thought, oh, this is great, but it counts towards your sea duck limit. And Ben said, no, no, they're not part of your sea duck limit. That was if they didn't want to shoot another one. Because they don't want to eat them, right? They just think everything... A lot of people think that what whatever dives is going to eat fish, which isn't necessarily true. A lot of shellfish, but... Not swimming fish. Um, that your that sea duck limit thing, aren't <laughs> aren't ringneck sea ducks too? Depends on who you ask. That's common. Yeah, there are sea duck likes a freshwater pond. <laughs> it's kind of an inside joke. I, was, I don't know. I don't know. It's, I don't know. I don't want to get anybody in trouble. No, that's fine. <laughs> I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to do with it. Um, we, uh, what? How about this? What are, not for the guided hunt, but for us personally, do you think there is a place we can shoot a sea duck? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, one of Bones' buddies, Brandon Glant. Uh, I hunted with him last year, and we just get shooting the shit and talking about... Like he's a lobster fisherman, so he's got his lobster boat. And right. he said, "Don't oh, you know? Tell me about how many he's seeing out there when he's fishing tuna." And I said, "Listen, I get all the decoys. Do you want to get out there and try shooting them off the back of the lobster boat?" Um, and Bones would be all over that. I mean, he sent us a text, right? Um, and then Peter, you know, Peter mentioned to you about taking his uh, father's boat out in the Cargan River, I believe. And old Sam. Yes. Yeah. You know what old Sam is? A lobster boat. His boat. Other than his boat, <laughs> old Sam is a dark rum. Ah, now see here. I'm guessing old, the boat's named after that. That could uh, be wrong. So here, old Sam, that could be Uncle Sam. Oh, okay, yeah. He, he probably either of you don't understand that one. What the American thing? Yeah, I know what Uncle Sam is. Yeah. <laughs> what did you say? The American thing. The American thing. Love, you're American. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm still looking. <laughs> Cost a thousand dollars to get was her, not, huh? Was that a part of the test for her to become an American? You damn right, and it cost a thousand dollars too. That question was not on there. Uh, well, it should have been. <laughs> um, I have, I had, I really wanted this to be a serious episode, and it, it just, yeah, it just hasn't right from the get go. With technical issues, it just hasn't gone well. Has it? No, we've had better ones. We're still waiting. Well, we can start over. I, I don't think that I, my head could stand another start over. It may, it may actually get your phones out or capture this video because you will see my head explode. <laughs> it's all right. All right. Um, yeah, we um, don't need that. Um, so for, G off, you're coming down here. Yeah, 2024. Can't wait. I was on a podcast today. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was on a podcast today that I, we were so foolish to think that in June or July that you and Judy could have came down and stayed here. Well, you could have. You just would have slept on yeah. the Yeah. Oh, listen, that would have been fine. I, I Honestly, I'm disappointed that we can't make it this summer because I'm just dying to see this place. But anyway, we'll, thank we'll see you. it January 2024. You will. It won't be green like the picture I posted up. Maybe maybe it'd be cool to be a little bit of white. No, that was that really put it into perspective for me. Yeah, um, I, I haven't felt it recently, just because I'm not. Before I was going back and forth each day, and there were some times I even I even told Chris Wilhelm the builder, as I came up Peerless Road and I I turned and looked, and I'm like, I was embarrassed. And he's, he's like, why? I said, because it's it's big. He says, isn't that what you wanted? 
Mm-hmm. I said, yeah, but like I still have like a little bit of a conscience. Like it, it's big. Yeah. All your stuff, love. You need to put it somewhere. It, but it looks great in that that aerial photo or the drone photo, whatever it is. I mean, it looks. I think it looks awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's been a long process. It's still, it's still a process. So it'll be it'll be something just kind of. It, it may be never ending, right? Yeah. Maybe never ending. Definitely. We should be sitting. If I could adjust. That way, when I look this way, you look this way. Instead of us looking that way, we would be looking at each other. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Um, what is your thoughts about hurricanes? No, I don't want to see another one like Fiona. I can, I can say that much. I mean, Fiona did an awful job here. They're still cleaning things up. Uh, I was by the national park today, where no, sorry, yesterday, <clears throat> and they've. They went in with, you know, heavy equipment and cleared a lot of trees. And, and, I mean, they had to. There's a lot of stuff sitting there. We ever had this forest fire, it would just spread like crazy. Like, mm-hmm. It would not be good. Uh, but even in behind my place where I take uh, Sawyer to, for a walk, this past week they've been cleaning that out. So it was, uh, we're still seeing remnants of it, and you'll still see it when you come up in the fall. Did the scrotum tree make it? They what? She called it a scrotum tree. <laughs> well, that's what I thought I heard, but I was like, that's what she said. Maybe that wasn't what she said. Nope, that's what she said. Did they knock Where it down? Where is the scrotum tree? Did they did they knock it down in the in the in the wall behind your house? The maple tree that was Yeah. Had the two big balls. That's the tree she's talking about. Oh, that one, yeah. No, I don't know. I'll take a picture tomorrow if I see it. Yeah. When you got a set of nuts that big, you're going to make it through a hurricane. <laughs> I didn't know. Like, when they cleaned up, did they, you know, kind of sacrifice? Yeah, so- I don't. I, you know what? I think it might be gone. It would be a shame if it is, but I'll make note, Karen. I'll okay. check that out for you. Well, if I can be halfway serious, I want to say that I can tell you right around... The chalet that we stay at Shaw's, there was easily just just around the chalet there was eight trees that were gone. Yeah. Has it been a, a yeah, good just that one sh- Yeah, just yeah, hundred percent. I mean like it was that's why I told people by asking me questions about how bad it is, like I don't I'm not this is not the entire property. Just right around our chalet where we there's at least eight trees that you can see had been already removed or were sitting over at forty fives or snapped off kind of thing, right? Did um Yeah. Did uh this is just bad. I don't know. Did Shaw's get, like, are, are they still burning things at Shaw's? No. When, when I went up to see Robbie there last, I think it was a week ago today or a week ago tomorrow, um, it didn't, to me, it didn't look any different than it did a year ago, like when you guys were here. Mm. They did a lot of work, right? They kept going at it in the fall and when, like, while you were there and afterwards cleaning stuff up, taking care of whatever might fall down mm. after the fact. You know, yep. Uh, is but the driving through the park, but it's different. I've noticed different spots where you can see the water now that you never used to be able to. Mm-hmm. Did did they get the barn started construction again, or is it still nothing there? No, that's it. It looked like they might have just barely started some construction or or preparation for some construction, but no, no burn. All right, Jeff, let's rewind this. The G and P goose hunt. G and P. G and P. G and J. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking P like P E I. <laughs> this is fucked up. <laughs> the G and J. The G and J guided hunt. Please re, re, step us through that one more time, please. So we're we've been, we've put it out there for four people to come and join us um, October 26th 7th and 8th I think it is uh, they'll stay at Shaw's accommodations are part of the plan um, you know come in early if you want stay a, a day late if you want but that's on you the hunt uh, food all beverages except for alcoholic beverages will be included I will be the guide <coughs> um, You'll be the entertainment or the cameraman mm-hmm. or both. Um, 
yeah, and we'll just we'll have a, a good time. It, it, it's more to me. It's more of an about the experience than the killing of the birds. It's uh, you know definitely we want to get you in on some birds, but just the hanging out afterwards, barbecuing, cooking some good food, Story. and drinks, some laughs, and yeah, and enjoying Pete. Stories to tell when you get home. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Yeah, um, exactly. Yep. If, it, if anybody wants, they can contact you. They can contact me. They can contact Karen. Very easy. We like I said, we have two more spots. It is two that the three, <clears throat> the three days of hunting, the three nights of lodging, the food, drink minus the alcohol. Um, need to, they're going to be responsible for licenses, transportation, all that. Get the guns in, all that sort of good thing. But um, it's two thousand dollars for the for the three day hunt. And that is in U.S. dollars. I was just going to say, if anybody has any questions that I can answer, I mean, I know you can answer probably all of them, but if they want to, you know, hear it from me, um, you know, they can contact me on uh, Facebook or Instagram. Instagram, I'm Woody underscore four. Facebook, it's G-E-O-F-F, Wood. That's why they call me g -off. And then what, 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 what social I'm media... Go what? I say that's why they call me G off amongst other things. Well, I was going to say what on what social media platform are you known as species? I don't know that I am on the social media platform. That's just the Pauli Network. <laughs> oh, Pauli Network. All right. All right, Jeff. Is, thanks. Yeah. Not Would, many people are on that one. The podcast is yours, Jeff. Go. <laughs> <laughs> now I know how Karen feels. <laughs> yeah, like, hey, put you on the spot. Okay. Um, yeah, no, always great to talk to you guys. Look forward to having you up. Um, look forward to having and meeting the new people that are going to come in. Mm -hmm. um, and it, I can guarantee one thing: I don't guarantee birds, but I can guarantee it'll be a good time. That that it will. It's just all around good. The worst experience I've had on PEI is the time that I got to drive across the bridge and leave. Yeah. We're giving it a COVID swab off your nose. Well, the COVID swab too, yeah. We had to get COVID tested as soon as we came across the bridge. That wasn't that wasn't nice. Yeah. No, it's a great place. You drove across the bridge and had to leave. When was that? No, no. I said the worst part is when I have when I have to drive across a bridge and leave. Leaving, leaving is the worst. Oh, part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Karen said, "Well, driving across the bridge when we came in, you know, getting the COVID swab up our nose." And then I have to tell you, I was going to say, thank God that craziness is all over the COVID bullshit. 100%. I got to tell you though, the one, the one time, excuse me on that, that is the official pit boss ringtone available on iTunes. But when we had to get tested that time, it was a little sketchy, wasn't it, love? Yeah, it was weird. We were, they were like taking us to this warehouse. Like, and I wasn't sure what was going to happen when we got in the warehouse. You had to drive your vehicle in. Shades of Nazi Germany was what I was yeah. thinking. In Charlottetown? Yep. Yeah. It was like X-Files-ish. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the used to be Department of Transportation building. Jeff Wood, Prince Edward Island, Charlottetown, PEI, Shaw's, October 25. Well, come in on 25, hunt 26, 27, 28 of October 2023. It's going to be an awesome time, and we have spot for two other people so we need a t-shirt we need someone to create us a logo for this event so we yeah can... you know what i thought of that too karen i thought it might be kind of cool to have yeah yeah that would be fun does karen do you realize that means that we need to spend money maybe jeff would like to and generally typically karen does not like me spending money <laughs> but that would be good it'd be a good memento and jeff, and jeff likes to spend jeff does like jeff with a j does like to spend money can't yeah. take it with you. Jeff the G doesn't. I, I, I think I know. Well, true enough. I think I know that. We need we need an artist help. Anyone anyone with artistic graphic skills? I'm thinking P E I Island, G and J, some geese. I think I, I like the the island with the, the Canada flag somehow. Canada flag might not be that important. Yeah, absolutely. Go. No, I've seen a lot of tattoos that way. The people that have had a tattoo of the, the Canada flag with the island over it or, you know, some sort of a mixture of that. And I thought, I always thought it was kind of cool. I need a haircut. That, that shit is long. 
That's money. I'm not going to argue that. That is money. All right, Jeff, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you for tolerating my lack of understanding this new platform that I am trying to dial in. Right, love? Yeah. I really like the in-person podcast. It's easy. We got to dial this in. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do it in October. We will. We're going to get we're going to get a You can't read that, can you? Jeff. Yeah, it went dead there for a minute. You, can you read that? Can I? No, I can't. Re- Come on, man. No. I'm on a freaking iPhone. Core Sound Decoy Festival. Do you see what a the bird is? It's a surf, surf scoter. What am I? Yeah, that's what I thought. And then Karen has TM decoys. Tommy, thinking of you, we are. I can, oh yeah, I see. I can see that. Mm. All right, man. Well, yeah, I got some sleds that are TM decoy uh, inspired. The s- sleds? Yeah, sleds or V boards, Y boards, whatever. I know you pr- prefer one or the other of the V board, Y board, but you said it correctly. The he first was kind time. enough to give me. What's that? You were correct the first time. V board. Correct. So Tom was kind enough to give me a pattern and I said he had posted something on Facebook said I and I said I may have to try those myself. Anyways, long story short, he gave me a pattern and he just said, you know, give me credit. So I'd have to make the sled or the B board before I can give him credit. I give him a lot of credit, always very talented one thing i one thing i wanted to bring up for you last oh. year actually the last two years jeff and i always forget i have um uh i didn't give you any of the have to grace decoy festival posters did i no no i remember last year you said that you forgot them. Yeah. yeah that and the mag the magazine i got i got a couple of those i get i get yeah. I, mean, I have to karen please help me remember all right all right love you have any words you want to say no, nope, just thanks, Geoff, for joining us. Sorry it was a bit chopped up and hope we didn't waste your time, but we mm. appreciate you getting on here and talking about this trip, which, you know, hope we, we would, you know, would just really hoping that we can have, you know, two more people join us. I think, um, you know, we're just going to have a lot of fun. So It's going to be a good time. Yeah, no, thanks for having me, and it definitely wasn't a waste of my time. Uh, no. It's when it's hot there. outside, I'm inside, so. It's your Sunday afternoon. We're taking away from you watching golf somewhere. Whoa! Time out! Time out! Karen is, Karen's now a golfer. Karen, you're, Karen's now a golfer. I know. It was fun. I well, saw that. We went to the the driving range one day with my son. The next day we went and did um, it was a uh, par three nine hole course, and yeah, it was good. It was fun. I want to do it again. And I wasn't that sore the next day. I was worried I'd be kind of all kinds of sore. Um, so yeah, it was. Uh, I wanted. I want to have another try at it. Yeah, I used to enjoy it. But as I as I said, yeah, I'll I'll teach you how to throw a golf club. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't 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 reach that point. But you know, give enough time, I'm sure. You know, it could it could turn into a game of frustration, but. It was fun. All right, this has yeah, been in the golf. So, go. I'm sorry, just speak, man. That's, I hate. I hate this thing. No, just. I'm gonna throw my computer across <laughs> out into the freaking driveway. Go ahead. No, the 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 uh, British Open was on, but it's over because of the time change, right? So it ended before the podcast. Mm, all right, that's a good thing. Um, I mentioned it earlier. This is the Pitballs Podcast, brought to you by our very good friends up at Molly's Place Sporting Goods. Molly's is easily found on Route 213 in Kennedyville, Maryland, on Maryland's famed Upper Eastern Shore. MyMolly's.com, M-Y-M-O-L-L-Y-S.com. Also helping us out, love, is Crabs to Go, easily found on Route 50 and Routes 589 in Berlin, very, very close to us. Mm-hmm. And sadly, because no COVID situation, they don't ship, they would ship anywhere, now they ship nowhere. So you have to be local. 
or at least you have to be in the area visiting to visit crabs to go. Duck Water Boats, Steve Hoover in New Philadelphia, Ohio. Duckwaterboats.com is the maker and manufacturer of the world's largest duck boat. Right, love? Yes. And what's it powered with? Come on. That's my <laughs> question. 350 there, you go. there you go. All right. I, I got you, it. You did, you did get it. You did get it. Next up, which we're very close to kind of announcing, uh, Dirty Duck Coffee. DirtyDuckCoffee.com. Buck and Jay at Dirty Duck. Guys, thank you very much. We appreciate you. Yeah, some good coffee. Some awesome coffee. But well, I can't say any more about it. All right. And on a podcast that I did earlier today, we had to break out. Here. Just happened to have it right here on the table. It is Duck Blind Bistro. John, Paul, and Jay, Northeast Alabama. It is an amazing little unit. And Jeff, there's at least two of them coming to PEI this year. Yeah, I need one of those. Mm -hmm. Duck Blind Bistro. Lastly, but not least, love Whaleyville Wagon Tails. WhaleyvilleWagonTails.com. You you really do have to be somewhat. Oh man, it's going to happen. I'm going to be quiet. Yeah, I'm not going to make any loud noises. Yeah, just keep talking. Is there, everybody's chilled. There's a car pulling out of the neighbor's parking drive, uh, driveway, and uh, they hear the gravel and it just. But they're they're so tired. They're not reacting. Don't need a doorbell around here. All right. To all our sponsors, thank you very much. To Jeff Wood. Charlottetown PEI, Prince Edward Island, thank you very much, Jeff, for being on. Um, and if you're interested in the two spots, the last two spots of the G and J, Prince Edward Island. First annual. First annual. And Karen's going to make a short shirt or something. I got no graphic All right. skills. <laughs> All right. I salute to you both. Thank you very much. As always, thinking of you, we are. Boom. There we go. Boom. Salute. Salute. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for having me.